Welcome to Module 9. Technical and Operational Aspects of Safety Management System. In this module you will learn about 1. The link between those on board and top management. 2. DPA responsibility regarding resources and personnel. 3. Plans for shipboard operations. 4. Incident response levels. 5. Control of documents, data and records. Link between the company and those on board. The DPA should be a link between the company and those on board to ensure a reliable connection between the highest management level and the persons on board each ship. Traditionally this link existed between the master and the top management. This link should not be used for normal routine daily operation of vessel but to be used with care and diligence. DPA has authority to contact CEO for an issue which cannot be solved at operational level. The DPA or his substitute should be contactable 24 sevenths by telephone or email. DPA as a person ashore has the authority to directly access the decisional level to compensate any communication dysfunctions. DPA Responsibility Regarding Resources and Personnel It's DPA's responsibility to ensure qualification and competence of company staff. He should ensure the master and crew are adequately qualified and certified. He should also arrange adequate familiarization and training. He should decide any required transfer of command or responsibilities. He should ensure that crewing agents are following company procedures by regularly vetting them. The DPA should always communicate in common language. DPA should be good at networking and should monitor and assess that adequate resources and shore support is provided to all ships. DPA must be kept in loop of the ship's requests such as 1. In normal conditions, he should be aware of crew issues, safety issues, relevant stores and equipment requests or demand of repairs or services and any other relevant information. 2. In emergency situations, he should be CCD so that he can support the master to better manage the situation. DPA should ensure that budget constraints do not hamper the provision of resources. He should monitor work carried out, or not carried out, during repairs or technical refits. He should also query any ship's requests refused by any other shore staff for budget reasons. Plans for Shipboard Operations Procedures and plans for all key operations should have 1. Safety of personnel, ship, and protection of the environment as prime objective. 2. Safeguards to control risks and 3. Compliance with relevant international and flag state regulations. Regular feedback should be taken from the master on the effectiveness of the SMS. Data from internal audits. Reports and analysis of nonconformities, accidents, and hazardous occurrences should be used to further improve the SMS. The company should ensure that there is a formalized systematic method for hazard identification, risk assessment, and management within the SMS. Emergency Preparedness as per the ISM code the company should identify potential emergency shipboard situations and establish procedures to respond to them. Company shall identify all possible situations where shipboard contingency planning would be required, considering the ship's type, equipment, and trade. The company should establish procedures for testing, monitoring, and improving contingency plans. Company should perform realistic exercises on board ships ashore and between ship and shore. All exercise results should be recorded, reported and evaluated in a systematic manner. The company should identify any additional training requirements which might be necessary and conduct training and evaluate result. Levels of Incident Response There are various levels of incident response. 1. Emergency control which is carried out by master and crew. This involves immediate shipboard response measures to get situation under control. 2. Emergency response which is carried out by superintendent or vessel manager. This involves providing shore-based operational and technical support. 3. Emergency management which is carried out by DPA or senior management. 
This involves divisional or regional response based on nature of impacts and support guidance from a higher level. 4. Crisis management which is carried out by top management. This involves their involvement in managing all spectrum of a business entity and interests. Documentation What is the difference between a document and a record? A document is live whereas a record is history. Any document should be user-friendly. This includes Safety management manual, handbooks, plans, drawings, rules and regulations etc. The company should set up procedure for document control. This includes validity of documents, review procedures, and dates and systematic approach to changes to documents. Thanks for watching this module. See you another time.